Scientists are now capable of facilitating impaired humans' lives. Our topic will address amputees to organ defects. We shall answer the questions, how far can we go, how far should we go? Hand transplantation is a solution that deals with the problem when people lose their hand because of an accident. According to the academic research, all over the world there are about 85 people who have undergone hand replant and hand transplant surgery successfully, which took roughly 9 hours. During the process, surgeons should reattach the bones, muscles, nerves, and soft tissues. Between the patients, survived with and their own hand or one from a donor. After the cooperation, scientists find that patients need to approximately two years to regenerate peripheral nerves so that at the first early year, the attached hand is less sensitive to touch than the original hand. One biologic, one biologic scientist said this is because the brain sensory map of the body, a series of cortical ridges and holes devoted to processing touch in different body parts, lose its ability to respond the missing hand in the absent sensory input. However, as time goes by, the connection between their wrist and new hand become most almost normal as people, healthy people. Prosthetic arms are powered by the movements of the wearer's body which manipulates wires in the arm, therefore controlling its movement. Electrical signals in the person's muscles are transmitted to the person's skin. These signals are then amplified and processed, enabling the operation of motors in the joints and hands of the arm. For prosthetic legs, there are sensors in the wearer's shoes. These sensors send a particular signal to the computers located in the knees to replicate the walking pattern. These computers are designed to recognize walking patterns quickly to make the device come mute. The technology doesn't end there, however. We now have the ability to enable a human being to visually perceive wavelengths beyond the physical spectrum. The first fully bionic man has been created who can breathe and perform a range of human functions. At this point, we must consider at one point do these technological advances withdraw humanity. One study genetically modified mice to make them better at learning and remembering. They added the amino acid NR2B to the mice's genome. The mice with the added protein then carried out cognitive tasks on numerous occasions and performed a lot better than mice without it. Their brains seemed to stay younger for longer as opposed to deteriorating like mice without NR2B would. Humans also have NR2B. If it plays the same function, there are possibilities to improve lives. For example, gene therapy could be used to treat diseases such as dementia by enabling patients to have better cognitive function for longer. However, the core problem with research into genetically modified intelligence is our intelligence is not limited or defined by our brains. We have the ability to make ourselves more or less intelligent. There are risks involved in any genetic modification. Gene therapy involves inserting a different amino acid into the protein chain. This can change the function of the entire gene. There are thousands of genes that are involved in the intelligence of an individual, and we have little control on where we place the new amino acid. This means it could attach and disrupt the sequence of amino acids in another gene and alter its function. For example, the disruption of the cell cycle can lead to cancer. Also, we don't know if the genes in the mice play the same function as in humans, and as there is much less room for error with, the, with humans, it becomes difficult to know how far we could go. Now comes the question of why body modifications can be of extreme importance. According to HelpOurBabies.org, 3.3% of babies are born with defects that range from problems with the heart to neural tube to missing limbs. But the technological advances and the explanations made on how the, these modifications of the body can be made to function normally, one of the leading causes of infant deaths in the US can be prevented. And who knows, maybe this child can grow to be the next Einstein. Another application is with liver diseases. It is the only major disease not showing any death decline. According to British Liver Trust, in 2008, around 16,000 people in the UK died of a liver disease. The solution, of course, is liver transplants, but this has many downsides, one of which can be graft rejection. Between 2007 and 2008, around 1,000 patients were on the transplantation waiting list. By enhancing the defected organ or transplanting another organ that is similar to the recipient's original one, graft rejection and cues will actually decrease. So when should these modifications be applied? Scientists can face religious disagreements. In order to prevent this conflict, the best option is to apply those human enhancements and replacements only when medically necessary and make it optional and not obligatory to patients.